Hey guys, I've been working on my animatronic wings for quite a while now and uh, I've done a lot of research on the topic, but today, instead of me showing off something that I've made, I would like to go over things that would help you make your own set of animatronic wings. Oh yeah, it's wing time. So a massive project like wearable moving wings might be overwhelming at first, so let's break it down bit by bit. A good place to start is to think about the size. Large, heavy wings will be hard to move and mount to your body, so go with something that is not super huge for your first build. Sketch things out and work out the proportions in real life. I personally think very visually, so I prefer doing one-to-one -one scale mockups just to see if the size feels right, you know? Size really is the main constraint. The choice of materials and motor strength will depend on it. So after you thought about the size and scale of things, another consideration is the motion itself. Like, how do you expect the wings to move? Do you want your wings moving like a bird's, you know, with some softness to it, this organic look, or more mechanical and science fiction looking? Fortunately for you, there's plenty of creative people out there that already made some designs that you can get inspired by. There's angel wings, steampunk wings, uh, bat wings, dragon wings, chicken wings. Instead of reinventing the wheel, find a design that you like and learn from it. Some designs can be really complicated, so start simple and go from there. I think it's a good idea to start with a mock-up, just to get an understanding of what needs to happen to get your desired wing motion. Prototyping with some Legos or some cardboard or whatever will help you understand the mechanics of it. Look at the designs with an open mind. You're always free to make modifications and make it fit just right. By changing the lengths and ratios slightly, you can get vastly different looks. Now, the larger the wings, the more robust materials you'll need to use. For small, light mechanisms, PVC tubes will work fine, and they're light themselves. But the largest wings out there are based on aluminum frames. They expand very wide, so they need that extra strength, and they use aggressive lever ratios, so they get a nice expansion speed too. There are two things that determine the expansion speed of a set of wings. One is the design itself, and the other is the motors. There's a few different ways how to get your wings moving, but the easiest ones are these. These are servos. They're motors that can move a limited range of motion, but with very high torque. And linear actuators. They're just motors with gearboxes that convert rotary motion to linear motion. Most designs out there incorporate linear actuators, mostly because they're very simple to work with and they're relatively cheap. Let's see what makes them tick. So under the hood, it's just a motor that will move a cylinder between two limit switches. Once it reaches either of the limit switches, it will stop moving until you reverse the direction. This really simplifies the electronics needed. Even the most fancy wings use stuff like off-the-shelf cheapo garage door openers and other similar controllers. So there's basically zero electronics work if you go that route. Servos, on the other hand, will require an Arduino or something, but their compact size and their power-to-weight ratio is very appealing for some designs too. Linear actuators come in different sizes and varieties. Their expansion speed is measured in millimeters per second, and the force they can generate is measured in newtons. In my wings, I'm using 500 newton, 20 millimeter a second linear actuators because I found them a good middle ground between their strength and their speed for my design. Due to the way they're built, you can't really have them super strong and super fast. It's a bit of a balancing act. One cool thing about these motors is that they come in somewhat standard sizes and therefore are interchangeable. So it's nice if you build wings and you buy slow, powerful motors just for a safe bet. You can always buy faster ones later if you end up not needing that extra power. I'll leave some links for the components in the description. Generally, to mount and wear your wings, you will have to have some sort of a backplate. Be it a frame with some straps, you know, like backpack style, or something more corsety where it wraps around your waist. Uh, both of those work fine, but it depends on the weight distribution of your design. It's a good idea to fasten your harness to your lower back, though. If you only use backpack straps, the wings will swing around a lot. Waist straps, shoulder straps, cross chest straps. It's better to have too many than too few, especially when those wings start moving and you need to deal with all that inertia. So that's it for now, guys. I hope you found this video enlightening. And uh, yeah, good timing. Right after Halloween, I know. Anyways, leave a like if you like this and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Would really appreciate it. Would show me that you care. And uh, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.